Uh, Coop, obviously our first uh, draft pick on Tuesday night. Um, start off by saying you had a big session today. How'd you find it? Can you come forward? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. It was just I was just dying to get out there with all the boys and and have a kick around. Um, you know the deck's in perfect condition, and yeah, the boys got around us, which is awesome, and made me feel a part of it. Made us all feel a part of it, and got around us and helped us out, um, directed us and stuff like that. So yeah, it was just it was just awesome to get out there. And your initial stint before Christmas, tell everyone a little bit about your living arrangements up until the Christmas break. Yes, I'm living with Bailey Banfield and his fiance, and Sibit Kuek, um, who's in the granny flat at the back. So they've made me feel a part of it and welcome, and yeah, just sort of nurtured me and showed me around Perth, which is good. Awesome. Uh, questions for Cooper, please. Um, well, how do you get your head around it all? How do you get your head around it all? Well, we just being over here and yeah. the media, this sort of stuff. Yeah, well, the club helps us so much, so much with all that stuff. Um, we've got you know four boys here that are all new to this, and and so we're going through the same journey. So you know, we talk to each other about it, and yeah, as I said, the club's amazing with with all the information and stuff that they give us. So yeah, yeah. Was it good to meet Matthew Cabbage on the flight over? Yeah, it was amazing. It was an unreal experience. So surreal. And to have his number, uh, yeah, it's, it's just an amazing feeling and something I'm really grateful for. Does that bring extra pressure? or? Um, yeah, a little bit. I mean, the number 29 hasn't been out there since since he played. So um, I guess for the Fremantle fans, it's it's something to look forward to and something that I'm looking forward to to get out there. So, yeah, it's awesome. We were just talking before trying to figure out how old you would have been when, he last, when Pat actually last played. Like, <laughs> yeah. you remember watching him play with me, what, 11, 12? Yeah, yeah, pretty young. So, yeah, just watching him dominate was yeah, it was it was pretty cool. And to have that number is just yeah, a surreal moment, yeah. So come over from Victoria, free to be over there, you don't get much free. Do you, do you watch much of them at all on Foxtel or, or anything like that to know a lot about your teammates? Yes, I'm a bit of a footy head, so I watch a lot of footy and definitely watch a lot of Freo, um, like like all teams. But yeah, just you know, just watching them on TV and then being a part of it and, and being next to them, yeah, it's just an awesome feeling. Yeah. Have you spent much time in Perth before? I've uh, never been to Perth before, so it's first time over here. Yeah. What's the first thing you did? What, what's the first thing you wanted to see? Uh, well, the club was one of them, definitely, and, and meet everyone. But like, as soon as I got off the plane, I was that hit with the face of a hot, hot wind. So definitely a bit of a change from Victoria. What about draft night when the coach came to your house and met all your family? How surreal was something like that? Yeah, it was, just, it was crazy. Um, he gave me a call. Um, JL gave me a call and said he's coming over. And you know, I just told my mum and dad and all my mates and, and family that were there. And you know, they all sort of freaked out. and. You know, having having an AFL coach come into your house was, was a pretty cool moment. So yeah, it was awesome. What are your expectations, your goals for season one? Yeah, well, first of all, it's just a just going to go straight straight towards the camera, other way a bit. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. yeah. <laughs> just turn your head. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just I guess um just to crack in as hard as I can in pre season and do it and do as much as I can and um sort of just learn off all the older boys here and all the experienced people um and yeah just sort of. Um, learn the trade and, and see how far I can get um, through this pre-season bit and then, yeah, sort of go from there. Were you happy you avoided those hill runs on the weekend? I just wanted to do it. I just wanted to get stuck straight in. Yeah, I sort of yeah, a bit annoyed that I couldn't get into it, but, yeah, it's just sort of a first-season dues, I guess. Living with Bailey, who are you thinking that you might want to tack onto it from a training perspective? He's your home mentor. Is there yeah. someone on the track that you're going to look towards? Yeah, definitely. Like the players like Caleb Sarong and Andy Brayshaw, who are elite mids of the competition, um, just sort of latch onto them and, and see what they do around the club. And at training, I think Caleb's still out there kicking goals. So as, as soon as I can get into it, I'll be out there with him, um, you know, kicking goals, doing ground balls, hands and stuff with him. So, yeah, just to learn as much as I can from them and like see what they've been through. So, yeah, sort of just um, yeah, learn as much as I can from them. Both of those guys are midfielders, but obviously the list management team have sort of spoken about how you could start your career as a small forward. Yep. How do you embrace a challenge like that? Yeah, well, obviously, as you said, embrace it with open arms and, and take on the challenge. Um, playing that second position as a, as a small forward or on the wing, I guess I'm, I'm really open to. So, yeah, learning off the, as I said, learning off the, the good players and, and the really experienced players down there in the forward line is something that I'll, I'll, I'll latch on to. <laughs> and Ollie's from San come forward, mate. Uh, from Sandringham Dragons and also East Brighton Vampires. And I believe the night was a pretty eventful night, not just for getting drafted, Ollie. Yeah. No. What are you talking about there? Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh yeah. So I was got drafted on the Tuesday, and um, my girlfriend's birthday night as well. What are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell the story, mate. Yeah. yeah. No, I was just like, um, was hoping I'd go first night so I could attend the, my girlfriend's birthday the second night, but. Uh, it didn't work out like that. So got picked up um, Tuesday night and then basically yeah, had to do a little bit at home and then 
we went straight over to her house to celebrate her night and try to make the most about her, but sort of some of the tension was taken away, which sucks, but um, no, it was all about her, so yeah. The boss got her name is? Anita. Yeah. And when it got to uh, Fremantle's pick on that night, did you have an inclination that we would be calling out your name? Um, I sort of did know, like, um, on Tuesday day, um, my manager was sort of just like, um, sort of telling me, like, um, these are the clubs that have interest, interest on you in the second night, but it was just sort of like, if I go early 30s or um, if it goes up to the 40 mark where I sort of went, like Freo um, have some interest in you. So I was sort of prepared when it came to that pick. Yeah. Awesome. Questions for Ollie, please. Welcome. Well, get you to stand straight on and just turn your head if you yeah. need to. That's great. Ollie, yeah. welcome. How are you feeling to be here? Yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, the club is so, so good with introducing us and you boys and um, yeah, I'm gelling jell- really well with um, all the backmen and also all the all the players and staff from Monks Freo. What are you kind of looking to, to get out of this season from a personal perspective? Yeah, um, sort of just learning as much as I can. Um, I mean, I already have, but yeah, as long as much as I can from all the players, um, pick their brains every day because they've been in the system for some of them for 10 plus years. So um, yeah, sort of learning from all them and then um, trying to grow, grow my body a bit. Um, and yeah, just play some good, consistent footy um, at, what, at what, whatever level that is. You should tell us the bloke sitting on that side of the screen will have more chance of playing early than the tall bloke sitting on his side of it. Mm-hmm. You've got to wait off. How patient do you have to be uh, and when you're going to see other people who are shorter than you getting opportunities yeah. because their bodies are a bit more yeah. ready for the game? Yeah, well, obviously that's like a big point with like talls and smalls, but um, it's sort of like I want to be patient, but then again, like I don't want to be patient and I just want to like get as hard, hard work as I can and um, get there as quick as I can. But obviously um, that does come with patience and um, yeah, sort of just trying to grow um, exponentially and um, learn as much as I can and grow as fast as I can and get out there as soon as I can. Um, but yeah, it's just whatever time So it's just, there's not really a timeline to it. It's just whenever I'm ready. Yeah. Any of the free eight defenders you watch from afar and admire? Yeah, Coxie, Pierce, Alex Pierce. Um, his field and Hayden Young when he was um, defending. I'm not sure, not sure if he's going to mid, in the midfield. Um, but just watching them all train is like awesome and how they how they defend and play. So um, I'm going to love working with all of them for the next couple of years. Yeah. What's your first impressions of training at this level? Yeah, um, everything's just a lot more faster, more intense. Um, you just got to be switched on. Um, there's not really many breaks and um, yeah, you should be really attentive to the coaches and what's happening around you and sort of what changes, like what players are doing and what you should be doing and then, yeah. I believe you were a forward growing up and then only really went into defence this year for your draft year. Can you talk us through the sort of thinking behind that? Yeah, so I was sort of like a forward ruck um, up until about uh, under 17s and then my senior game coach, Rob Harding, in the pre-season um, of 2022 sort of came up to me and said, um, we're going to play as a key defender um, along with one of my teammates, uh, Lockie Voss, and us two sort of just um, learned that role together, um, sort of, yeah, helped out. Was, we were helped out with um, some other players and, and coaches back there, but um, yeah, it was a good move for him from Rob Harding to do that to me. Um, and I thought I really embraced the role and um, yeah, I've really enjoyed it and I probably like it better than playing as a forward um, so far, yeah. Do you see yourself as someone who could still play both or like yeah. you said you would rather play defence? Yeah, no, I could, um, I mean for school footy I was playing a lot of forward and a bit of ruck. I don't know about ruck at this level but um, switching to forward I still think I've got that in me and um, knowing I was playing a bit of it this year I still think I've got that um, forward craft to me. So yeah, it's sort of back and forward I can play. Part of that generation of COVID kids from Victoria who didn't get to play for what, two years? Yeah, one and a half, two, yeah. What did you do during that time to maintain yourself to the level that's got you to here? Yeah, I was just a lot of running. So me and my, one of my good mates from school, um, majority of the mornings would go out and run. Um, and then me and another mate, we had the same lunchtime breaks and we just go to the Oval, um, play a game of horse or something and kick the footy, have some set shots. So just kept constantly like getting the ball, um, getting the legs moving, all of that. I mean, there's not much you could do. It's not like mass training because all the restrictions. So, um, yeah, I thought that was pretty, I was only like, yeah, I was only about 14, 15, 16. So it wasn't too pivotal for me, I, I, like compared to the other boys, but um, no, nah, that was, it was a pretty, pretty weird time back then. A long time not be playing yeah, long sport time. though. Yeah. And, and to still make it. So do you think your motivation that you found within yourself to just keep going yeah. at that point, it's got you to here? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, sort of just that motivation from 
sort of like yeah when i'm young and in that COVID period just to see how the other boys have made it and um how far i've come so i sort of took that in my stride and um yeah sort of just wanted to work hard as i can and, um see how far i can take it yeah jack's from uh, south adelaide the panthers and ranella junior footy club um and i'll start off jack by asking you about your experience in the afl academy where you spent some time with uh, coop yeah no it was an incredible experience we got to do um we had elite trainings with some of the best kids in the comp and lucky enough to play against some senior bodies and the poor lad magpies and carlton vfl so took a lot of learning out of that and um just the experience of um yeah with some of the boys that had the same dreams as you was pretty good and obviously uh you're known for your goal scoring and hitting hitting the scoreboard is there a particular afl player uh, that you've watched really closely through your junior career um i loved eddie betts growing up he was one that um, I love watching and just some of the ridiculous goals he could kick was pretty special to watch. So he's one that, yeah, I love watching. Awesome. Coming close to the mic and we'll open it up to questions. What have you done over the years for your goal kicking and aiding your craft? I think it's just constant reps. So all the time I try to get out and just practice some set shots, whether that's before or after training or even just practicing some ground balls or some snaps from the boundary, just constantly keeping up and keeping the reps and um, yeah, making sure you consistently um, hitting the scoreboard and um, yeah, just kicking them straight. Not just about goal kicking, though, the forward line role is really complex now. Um, that side of the game, you've been working hard on that. Yeah, exactly. Just a full craft, so ground balls at ground level, be able to give the quick hands out or just leading patterns and working with the tools. I think that was one big thing learning I got out of the last couple of years. And um, yeah, I've maintained that full craft pretty well. What's the pressure like day one when you're a shot for goal and you've got folks who play well at footy stand next to watching you and going, I wonder how this deal goes? Yeah, I think it's just blocking out that sort of distractions. You're going to have that um, people yelling at you from the sidelines or that sort of thing. So it's just staying in the moment and just going through your routine and um, yeah, making sure that's all sorted. Did you enjoy what you were in the first session? Yeah, I loved it. Um, it's something I've wanted to do all week. As soon as I got picked up, I wanted to get in and start training. So it was really enjoyable and I had such a great time today. Who are you living with? I'm with um, Comrade Williams and his host family. Um, they're a great family and some in a nice location, Cottleslow. So yeah, um, I'm pretty lucky. Um, live pretty close to the beach. On Wednesday at the Rookie Draft, we rounded out us rounded out our selections with Odin Jones from West Perth, uh, also the Junior Luck Kinross Junior Football Club. And Odin, what was it like when you got the call that you were going to be a Fremantle Docker? Uh, yeah, pretty exciting. I was actually in the car on the way home from the gym, but no, nah, it was a good experience. I was with my mate, and we were just both in shock. So yeah. And uh, you've been here a bit longer than the other guys because you live locally. Um, how's it been so far? Yeah, good Friday. Everyone was very welcoming and made me feel comfortable and just wanted to get into it. Okay, step up and we'll get some questions for you, mate. What are your confidence levels in terms of being looking? Um, not much different than I'd say the other draft picks, but I just really wanted to get out on the track and just show what I can do. What are your expectations now? Um, um, just to get my body right and just learn as much, be a sponge and just get as much information as I can. Who do you kind of model the game off if there's anyone? Um, Brody Grundy, because he can all, like in the ruck, he could also be a, another midfielder and go hard at footy at ground level. Having Sean and Luke Jackson to work with here, like what's that going to be like for you? Oh yeah, very good. Always watch him on telly, so. Just excited to get out there with them. How is it? It's different for you, do you feel, coming in knowing the script a bit more intimately than what these guys have having and being in this bubble over here? Um, no, not really. i just really excited. Just people that I watch on TV, I'm finally training with them, just getting out there with them, so yeah. Just settling into the program and making sure you yeah, they're raring to go and they want to do everything, um, but we leave it to high performance and medical just to ease them in. Uh, they've been through a lot in recent times um, with the travel as well. We really want to get a thorough assessment of where they're at physically. Uh, the last thing we want is for any of the, the young lads to uh, get an injury early. So it's a it's a pretty steady build up until Christmas and they can really um, build their momentum post Christmas. And when you get the family in to do the whatever, Right. Induction, the yeah, induction, yeah. induction yeah. that'll happen uh, late later on in December. So really looking forward to that. Obviously, we've had a lot of contact with the families already uh, through the draft, and it's great that Justin's been able to visit some of the families um, straight away, uh, which is a great effort by him. Uh, we think it's really important that their their families feel really included in the Fremantle family as well. 
Yeah. How are your thoughts about the the draftees you got in in terms of the needs of the club? And you came from a fair way back in the draft. Right? Yeah, we're really excited to bring all uh, four of the lads in. Uh, we did go in with a, more of a specific list management need this year than perhaps in other years, and we're really thrilled to be able to bring in some players that we think will fit those needs. There's been a lot of talk about you know players leaving via the trade period and going home, yet you've drafted three interstate kids. Does that speak to the confidence in the program? Yeah, we've got a lot of confidence um, that we'll retain um, players, and certainly we hope that these four have long, prosperous careers, and those that are not from Western Australia will see out their careers here. We've got a high degree of confidence that that will happen. The fact that a lot of the guys actually went to Victoria, were West Australian, that part of the year, that make people go, well, it doesn't matter where they live, if they stay that same, if they go, they go, we'll pick regardless. Yeah, we'll, we'll back in our program and, and make sure that uh, players feel that they can develop uh, both on field and off field here at, here at Fremantle, and, and we'll back in our program to deliver that. What are the extra challenges of having guys playing some of the legal stuff who are coming over from interstate? Is it different to him who's been living here? Yeah, well, uh, Odin's actually living with Sean Darcy um, just to minimise the travel for half the week. He'll go back to his family, which is a great balance, we think, uh, for him. But uh, we're obviously very experienced in catering for players that um, come to our club from interstate. Uh, we've got a really experienced team that deliver that and we, we try and think of everything that they're going to need because it is a stressful time of pre-season, not just for the physical exertion, but the new club, getting to know new people. So we want to take as much of that stress and anxiety out of their hands as we possibly can and we've been able to do that for a long period of time. And great to have Jeremy Sharp today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we've um, been anxiously awaiting our opportunity to bring Jezza in. It arrived this morning. I did say it was the short, one of the shortest SSP trials, um, although there's been a few across the league who have done the same pathway. Uh, as Jeremy has, he ran really strongly. We know that he's raring to go. He's a great athlete. We feel like he just needs opportunity and um, we know that he'll work really hard to get that opportunity. He really showed it this morning, I'm really matching it with Peter. Uh, Peter Bowles, Peter Bowles. <laughs> <laughs> it would have left, left me well in his dust, both of, both of them. But it, yeah, he's a strong runner, uh, Jezza. He's got areas of his game that he wants to improve on and, and he needs to improve on and he's well aware of that. But certainly from a running and uh, athletic perspective, he's, he's elite. Tell us about Peter Bowles. Like having him out there is different than would be cool for a run to run against yeah, the club was very fortunate to have Peter present at the Dave Mundy testimonial lunch a little while back and he had some great messages for our group, not just for the physical professionalism, but also the mental side of being an elite runner in you know, world athletics. So that really resonated strongly with all of our players. Uh, we continued to build that relationship with Peter and he was thrilled to be able to come down and um, he took it pretty easy on the guys, <laughs> that's for sure. I don't think he was blowing too hard, but just to be around elite athletes, I'm sure these guys will attest to what a great experience that is. So whatever exposure we as a club can give our players to elite sport, um, we, we want to explore that. And we've brought in uh, a myriad of different athletes over the past few years and Peter's another one of those. Three guys didn't do much though. So Fife, Darcy, Brayshaw. Can you take us through where they're at with their interaction, joining the group eventually? Yeah, um, not sure the exact timetables on each of those, but first day back and um, just want to manage their loads and make sure that they're, they're good to go, similar to what I started this conversation with. And it is a long pre-season and we want to, to manage them as best we can, being being older players as well. Um, so you'll see them steadily progress before the pre -Christmas, over the pre-Christmas period. You'd be wary with Fife given he's got up, built himself so much and then just hit the wrong time. Yeah, well, Fifey has said that he feels fantastic. He's done a lot of work over the break, even though he was overseas for a, a, a large proportion of that. We know that he works really hard at his game. Um, so it's just about looking after him. He's had, you know, a tough run with injury, but I feel like over uh, this break, he was uh, injury free. So he could really build and hopefully we can continue with that momentum with Nath. Just with a few other fresh SSP faces, like how many actual vacant list spots are there? Can you talk us through that? Yeah, we're just working through that with the AFL. So there'll be a submission for Sevet Quek and Josh Corbett to go on the uh, inactive list, the long-term in injured list. Uh, Josh will be having some surgery uh, shortly and Sevet has obviously had the ACL and a shoulder surgery. Um, so um, they won't play any part in our campaign next year. So that gives you the ability per list spot to bring in two train-ons. So we could have a potentially four train-ons over the coming weeks. Um, so we'll make those decisions um, shortly and, and get some more guys in and give them an opportunity.